Back in uh, number 104 and 105, I was trying to extend this frequency range of the Analog Discovery 2 Spectrum Analyzer by using a mixer. Now, what I was doing there was moving frequency components from one part of the spectrum to another. In other words, downshifting them so that they were within the frequency range of the analog discovery. But I got to thinking a few days or so ago about the idea of trying to extend the frequency range using a demodulator probe. So what you see on the screen here uh, is, uh, and the reason I was looking at that as opposed to the mixer approach is the mixer approach moves a band of frequencies but the problem is that it does not preserve the, the wave shape down to DC. So what I was trying to do was to find a way to preserve the wave shape of, say, mo modulated signals up in the higher frequencies, that is above the range of the analog discovery. And one way that w existed back in the day was to use a demodulator probe. So that's what I, you see on the screen here. At the bottom, is a 5 megahertz carrier that is modulated 100% by a 5 kilohertz audio or uh, baseband if you use more modern terminology. And at the top you see the demodulated signal. Doesn't look too bad. One problem you see here is there's a little bit of distortion at the bottom and that's due to the fact that these, these uh, cheaper demodulator probes use uh, simple diodes. And diodes have a low uh, a cutoff voltage. In other words, they require a minimum voltage to conduct. So you're always going to have some of this distortion when you use a simple demodulator probe. So uh, the probe that I'm actually using, though, might interest you. It's a demodulator probe from the 50s. Yeah, crappy old dinosaur bone, right? Well, actually, as I'll show you in a second, it's the best demodulator probe that I have. And I have some reasonably expensive ones, ones that cost over a hundred dollars and have been recently built. I think uh, every, all of these that I'm about to show you in a minute, uh, with one exception, were made in the last uh, ten years or so. At least I acquired them at that time from, from new stock. So, uh, so what is my point here? Well, my point is that sometimes the old technology actually winds up being better. And we'll talk more a little bit about what's inside one of these probes here in a second. But remember for later that what you saw up here was a pretty good reproduction of the baseband. Now let's take a look at uh, a more modern probe. And here is a modern probe. Modern in the sense that it's recently purchased, I guess, is the better term. This is a probe made by B&K Precision. It is called a PR32A RF Detector Demodulator Probe Kit. It supposedly works from 100 kilohertz to 950 megahertz. Now, like most things, you know, there's a little bit of marketing hype in there, but no, I'm not here criticizing the uh, spec sheets. I'm just looking at what you can expect to get. Now, I haven't changed the settings on the oscilloscope. In other words, uh, and this, by the way, is the Rigol uh, DS5402, although it's been upgraded to a 500 megahertz bandwidth. So, the what you see at the top is the demodulated signal and you see it's oh less than half the amplitude of the the old uh, 50s I'll call it the dinosaur bone 
that, uh, by the way, is an ICO uh, probe that I built probably in about 1957. And the only modification to it is I added a BNC connector. It used to have one of the old style connectors. But anyway, you'll notice a couple of things about this. One is the amplitude is quite a bit less. I'll raise the uh, gain of the oscilloscope from what we had before so you'll see a little better. Now you notice that there is substantial distortion. So what's going on here? Well, what is happening is the, the capacitor, uh, when you demodulate a signal using a diode, you basically wind up with a half wave of RF. Then if you filter that, you get what is in, in essence the wave shape of the modulation. So this is, is the the wave shape of the modulation. But why does it tail off like this? First, there's a little bit of phase shift, notice, from the peak here to here. But, the, but then it looks like a sawtooth. That's because the capacitor in the probe has too much capacitance to respond or to recover at this modulating frequency. Remember, we're only using 5 kilohertz. Okay, let's look at another uh, probe now. So what I've done is changed to another probe. It's called a TX1030. This is the manual for it. And you'll notice that it's, uh, it's made by Hong Kong Texas Company Limited. I don't know if you can read that very well. The specs here on the back. Notice that it has the same decay characteristics as the BNK Precision. In fact, this is actually a cheaper version of the BNK. Uh, in other words, it's a knockoff uh, made by a, a, at least exported through Hong Kong, probably made in China. And you'll notice it has basically the same wave shape as the BNK. That is won't follow the decay of the of the audio of the 5 kilohertz. Now this one says that it will work from 100 kilohertz to 750 megahertz, a little lower upper bandwidth, but we're well within the the frequency ranges of this uh, of this particular device. The uh, well it looks like somehow we've managed to lose our signal. There we are. Okay, we're back again. Uh, just a, a bad connection. So, so what's the point here? Well, the point is that if you're trying to extend the frequency response, you need to pay attention to the construction of the probe. Now, let me show you a, uh, a third probe made by Syncor before I discuss uh, some of the characteristics of the circuitry. Okay, this is the Syncor 39G81A demodulator probe. Here is the manual for it. And I'll show you the circuit here in a, a second. Notice that the waveform, there's a lot more amplitude. Once again, I have not changed this from where it was in the last segment. So I'm going to reduce the gain one step. And now I'm back to the same gain that I showed you on that original dinosaur bone. Notice that the flattening at the bottom is worse than it was in the ICO, the, the dinosaur bone. But it does seem to follow the envelope, at least with regard to the positive excursions. Now, of course, when it goes negative and the diode cuts off, that's what is happening here. And we'll talk about that in a second when we look at the circuit. So, okay, why am I going into all of this? Because I'm hoping in a future video to use one or more of these probes with an analog discovery to see if you can, uh, if it's an effective tool for looking at RF circuits. Now, in order to use this kind of a tool, you need to use modulated RF. And, and understand, you're only looking at the modulation envelope. In other words, you're recovering the modulation 
and using that to assess the, the circuit performance. So now let's take a look at the uh, schematic of this particular probe because it's similar to all the others. Here, by the way, is uh, <laughs> a quick glance at the setup I'm using. I'm using a 50 ohm terminating resistor from the signal generator. And by the way, the signal generator that I'm using is the uh, Siglent uh, 120 megahertz arbitrary waveform generator that uh, I talked about in some previous videos. So here's the circuit of the 39G probe that we just looked at made by Syncor. Notice the way it works is the input signal is coupled through a capacitor to a full wave rectifier. This, the positive signal goes through a 27K resistor to ground, whereas the negative signal is shunted directly to ground. But notice the reason that you're getting distortion on the bottom of the waveform is when the signal is between zero and about 0.7 volts negative or, or 0.6, the uh, a silicon diode will not conduct. To alleviate that, what Syncor is doing in this case, and what many demodulator manufacturers uh, use, is they use a lower voltage diode. Now back in the day that would have been a germanium diode. More recently uh, they use Schottky diodes. But uh, at any rate, the lower the forward voltage of the diode, the closer you can approximate the bottom of the, uh, of the waveform. So basically, it's just a capacitor and a resistor, and then you see this over to the scope. So what is going wrong with some of those other probes? Well, those other probes are actually a little more like this circuit. Now, this is another Syncor probe, and actually it's, it's a voltage doubler probe. Notice that it uses four diodes, so instead of just a half wave, it's actually, or a full wave, it's actually a full wave voltage doubler. So because it's a, it doubles and it's a full wave, it essentially produces an output signal which is four times the peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, or peak amplitude of the input signal. But uh, I don't want to get into the details of this particular probe because it's not really designed to be used on an oscilloscope. It's designed to produce a DC output uh, that is proportional to the RF input. So it's this capacitor here, this 390 picofarad capacitor on the output, that will not completely discharge, that causes uh, that is, the time constant of this capacitor and that resistor is such that it, well, this capacitor will not completely discharge between cycles unless you're using a very low frequency. Now back in the day, that is the day of the dinosaur bone, the frequency of interest was 60 hertz because a lot of these were used with sweep generators. And so this particular probe the fact that it really doesn't, uh, that it has this voltage offset is not really an issue. Furthermore, a probe like the, uh, the B&K, the, the PR32A, if you're using it with a sweep generator, where you're only interested in a 60 hertz, say, sweep frequency, once again, this one works fine and the, the long delay or decay of the RC time constant doesn't hurt you. So what I'm trying to do is just give you a basic idea of the kind of probes that we will be using on the analog discovery in uh, hopefully a future video. At any rate, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, before I close, I will show you a book that I found helpful from back in the day that talks a little more about these issues and you might want to look for it on the internet. But before I do, I, I do have to say, if you're looking, for example, for a probe like this one, be, be careful you don't get this probe. This is actually a demodulator probe, but it is intended 
to be used on a test lead that is a, an ordinary uh, test probe for some Sencor equipment. And they also make uh, these sorts of transient protection probes that look a lot like that one. Th those are not what I'm talking about. Maybe someday if we look at some Sencor equipment that uses them, we'll talk about those. But for now, let's just stick to this basic idea. And, and uh, this probe, by the way, looks like that if you're looking for it on the internet. That is not the one with the yellow band, but this probe on this side is the 39G, what is it, 39G81A demodulator probe. So let's take a look at that book and then wrap up this overly long video. So here is the book. It's called How to Use Test Probes. It is published by Alfred Gerardi and Robert Middleton. Now, Gerardi wrote a lot of books on radio back in the 40s and 50s, and in fact, his uh, series of books on uh, radio circuits and uh, troubleshooting and so on is a classic. Robert Middleton came along in the 50s and was one of the most prolific writer authors. This is published by Ryder. So, the, this book has one of the best descriptions of these various, what I would call specialty probes, that is probes designed, for example, to uh, read high voltage or isolate the circuit from the, the test instrument, rectifying probes, those generally, what they mean there is probes that produce a DC output proportional, say, to an RF signal. And then a demodulator probe, which is designed to recover the envelope of a modulated RF signal. So, uh, if you can find this book online and you're interested, you might want to uh, look, uh, look up some things in it. It's got some great uh, descriptions and a lot more than I can go into here. But uh, in the meantime, and at least until I can uh, perhaps uh, do a video on the analog discovery with some of these probes, I hope you'll have a nice day.